Meet me. All right, welcome back, boys. We're back in business. I know I haven't uploaded in a while. I was out of town. But uh, yeah, we're back and we have a new hero on deck, Yulha, Earth Knight. Let's find out what she's all about. Probably be busted like everything new nowadays. And doesn't look like a waifu to me. She looks old and young at the same time. I can't really put my hand on it. The artwork kind of seems like, um, what's that popular like demon hunter anime that everyone's obsessed with? Looks like something out of that. But uh, as usual, we'll skip the story stuff. We don't care. Like, yeah, is she like 900 or is she 5? Who knows? I don't know who that is. Look at these scary... Actually, I kind of like her. Those, uh... She's clearly insane based on her facial expressions, and uh, I dig it. Well, now, here she looks nice. Well, whatever. Let's see what we got. So... Earth Knight, high HP. I don't know what her stats are in terms of an analog. Pretty slow, though. Typical Knight stats. Nothing to write home about here. Doesn't have any crit chance. Doesn't look like any kind of a DPS unit. Probably just a standard Knight, but we'll see. Let's see. Skill introduction. We're starting off on the skill two. Malicious smile. They even know that she has a ridiculous smile and they're pointing it out. When attacked by a single attack, reflects 30%... Ooh, reflection heroes. Uh, of the damage suffered to the attacker. Reflected damage cannot be higher than the caster's max health. Is this supposed to be a Hawaiian counter? Um, but it's only 30%, so probably not. It won't even break the barrier. After being attacked... Actually, no, it would break the barrier. After being attacked, when health is 30% or less, dispels all debuffs from the caster and activates murderous intent the effect after being attacked can only be activated once every five turns wait is that the 30 percent thing or all of this if it's all of this that's pretty bad but i'm assuming it's the second half that they're talking about the uh, murderous intent thing. If you only reflect 30% of the damage once, that seems kind of bad. Uh, grants a barrier to the caster for three turns and increases combat readiness by 20%. I mean, that doesn't seem that busted to only activate once every five turns, unless it's like a incredibly enormous barrier. Hmm. Let's see it. Oh, so they are using quite uh, Let's watch this. After being attacked can only be activated once every five turns. Being attacked. The effect after being attacked can only be activated once every five turns. Murderous intent. Grants a barrier to the caster for three turns and increases combat readiness by up to 25%. I mean, it barely tickled Hua Young. The barrier is pretty thick. I guess, but it can only be used every five turns. That is a long ass cooldown for just a barrier, but it is pretty thick. Okay. Barrier strength increases proportional max skill three. All right. I, I, I mean, as long as she always reflects, I think it's okay. Symphony of Agony attacks the enemy by unraveling sphere of sadism, sadism and when the Enemy is defeated, recovers the cast herself. When the target is not an elite or boss not monster, ignores Aureus. That's pretty strong. Penetrates. Oh, it's like a Blood Moon Haste thingy, but cannot trigger a critical hit. Damage dealt increases proportional to lost health, and amount recovered increases proportional to max health. Hmm. Is this going to be some another ridiculous, like, uh true damage one shot skill let's see creates the target's defense but cannot trigger a critical hit damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's lost health and amount recovered increases proportional yeah it's another ridiculous one shot skill but the thing is it's proportional to her lost health so how much does it do when she's at full hp and Aren't people just going to ignore her if she does this and just burn her down last? Like, if it hit this hard all the time, like, it hit this Rimuru for, like, is it on proof? Critical hit. 
health increases proportional to the caster's lost health, and amount recovered increases proportional. That's not on proof. I mean, that's still a lot of damage, and it ignores Aureus. Um, and she was at about 6k HP when she started it then. But let's say it only hits for like 10k at full HP. I guess that's still pretty good, right? Considering that you could just throw it off whenever if it's true damage, basically. I mean, I mean not true damage, but like uh, it doesn't need to crit. I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at the S1. Attacks the enemy. 100% provoked. That's actually super solid for an S1. Damage dealt increases proportional to the cap. I gotta say though. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's lost health. And amount recovered increases proportional. That's probably one of the sweeter animations in the game. I don't really like the way she looks. She looks kind of like derpy. But uh, the animation's pretty cool. She's got cool animation but a derpy face. Artifacts, Fear of Sadism, grants a barrier to the caster for two turns. When attacking with a single attack, if a caster is granted a barrier, damage dealt increases by 10%. Hmm. That's interesting, but it's kind of counterintuitive because she'll get a barrier so that since she has that barrier, she'll do more damage. The barrier will be thick because it scales according to max health, but then her main damage ability increases proportional to her lost health. So if you start off with a barrier, you don't really have any real opportunity to lose health, especially because she's probably a super tanky knight. I really need to see the scaling on this S3. Like, um, I feel like you might have to just rip it early against a lot of teams because any team that can avoid her will avoid her and i'm also not completely clear on if this only activated once every five turns is just the second part or also the first part because if it's both parts this passive is completely ass um, if it's just a second part it's a little bit more tolerable but i honestly don't think like i thought based on the five turn cooldown this Passive was going to be something incredibly busted. It doesn't look that busted. I mean, it looks really strong. Um, I think it would definitely be busted since she's a knight if it was like every turn. But with all the strips and stuff in the game now, like five turns, and it doesn't look like it's reduced in any way. I guess you could kind of reduce it because the soul burn on her S3 is grant an extra turn, but it's an expensive soul burn. It's a full 20 soul soul burn. Yeah, I don't know about this hero, guys. Um, I think it's good if you could... I guess if you pair her with, like, Conquer Lilius or something, and this thing is not limited to five turns, and you could just keep funneling them into her, might be pretty good. But that's a, a pretty strict limitation, or maybe like F10A or something, even though I have not seen F10A and RTA in forever at this point. She's like a pocket pick and a super rare one at that. Um, but I don't know. I don't want to underestimate her because of her S3. Like anytime you bring out a move where you don't really have to do anything and it's going to do a crap ton of damage, that hero becomes viable right off the bat right like if you can just delete stuff with this with her being at max hp that changes the story entirely especially because ignoring aureus is a huge deal ignoring aureus is a huge deal that means it's going to ignore most mitigation other than like proof but the thing is i think yeah it's going to hit really hard if she's at low hp but depending on those multis at her max hp Again, if you have a team where you can just ignore her, she's just going to sit there and do nothing. Um, I guess the fact that she has redirected Provoke helps a little bit, because at least she can, every once in a while, force someone to attack her. But, you know, with like Handman and stuff, there's also a lot of immunities out there. With that said, this hero is kind of my style. I do kind of generally like playing tanky, annoying stuff. Um, that's always kind of been my play style, except this season, because I'm just doing whatever this season, because I don't care. But in general, I've always liked like a bruiserish play style, so I think I would definitely build this hero for my play style personally, and try to just bait people into her. 
assuming that this thing is always the 30% damage reflect on single attacks, if it's not, then I, I kind of don't care about the hero, because to me, this is a dead passive then, um, if she only does it once every five turns. But outside of that, I, I'm i pretty intrigued, although I don't really like her artwork too much, um, other than the S3 animation, which is freaking awesome. baller. I love it. But uh, yeah. So those are my thoughts on her. I think I don't think she seems that busted. Um, I think a lot of it depends on how this passive works and how this S3 works. If this S3 can hit for like 20k at full HP, then she might be pretty busted. If it hits for like 5k, I think she's going to be pretty bad. But uh, we'll just have to find that out and I'm sure whatever the data miners know, but obviously I don't know that information at the time of recording this video. So anyways, what are your thoughts? If you guys know the multis, someone will always post it in the comments. I'll heart it, push it to the top. Um, yeah, and whoever goes for her, best of luck on your pulls. Make sure you join Channel Nuts, and I hope you one-tap her. So anyways, thanks for watching. Till next time, boys. Peace out.